Okay, today's Monday. Uh, I feed heifers on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I just do that to uh, save time. I give them enough feed to uh, last them for a day or two, depending on, on grass. Right now, there's not a whole lot of grass, so they're about getting max TMR. Um, and uh, we just feed them three times a week just to save time. You know, it takes about an hour to feed heifers so if I fed them a small amount and fed them every day it'd be seven hours a week compared to feeding them a large amount three you know three hours a week so it just makes sense to go ahead and do that you got to be careful doing it though uh, you don't want to over saturate the feed and have it get hot then you can get clostridia problems and stuff like that um, but uh Right now we're mixing feed for 250 heifers. Um, we got about 6,000 pounds of baleage, 2,600 pounds of corn, 2,300 pounds of our three-way mix, 600 pounds of uh, soybean meal, and 150 pounds of mineral. And we get a custom heifer mineral made, so it's in 50-pound uh, sacks, so I've dumped three of them in the bucket. Anyway, so we'll get started feeding, or start mixing, we'll get started mixing feed.
pulling in now to feed the uh, 10 and 11 month old heifer group. There's three groups. There's uh, these, the 10 11 month old, the 12 to 13 month old, and then uh, the rest are bred heifers. Um, we did get, uh, looks like it probably two inches of rain last night, so it's really muddy. Uh, We'll get these fed and then we'll go to the next uh, the, the 12 to 13 month old heifers and then after that the bread heifers. The bread heifers are down in the bottom that one's going to be uh, kind of tricky. But we'll see what happens. These are our, our three to four month old heifers and a few steers that we're keeping. Um, they just got moved out of the weaned pens and they're out here on the screen grass now. They're, still, they're getting fed calf feed, uh, which is just a grain of corn. <coughs> a grain mix of corn and uh, three-way mix and soybean meal and a medicated calf mineral. Okay, we already fed the, the yearling and 13-month-old heifers. I uh, forgot to push the record button on that one. But uh, now we're at the bread heifers, and this is the bottom. It's got a creek that runs through it. And after that rain last night, uh, it's pretty full. I imagine it's five, six foot deep right now. Um, it normally has about six inches of water in it when it's normal. Uh, and this is, like I said, at the bottom, it's wet. I'm uh, a little nervous because I get stuck, but uh, I think it'll work. Anyway, I'm going to put you on the front of the tractor so you can see what the ground looks like. Uh, I'm not quite sure where to put it, but I'll figure it out. three places in there that I was I was getting worried. Uh, this is a 2013 Case Puma 130 and uh, it, it will pull. It does, it does really really good. I got uh, the wagon weighs 15,000 pounds empty and I have almost 6,000 pounds of feed. Uh, so 21,000 pounds on uh, I think they're 445. Uh, hang on. Yeah, 445, 50R, 22.5 <coughs> tires, uh, double axle with suspension on the wagon. Um, and uh, there's a couple spots that I 
I spun pretty good, but anyway. Uh, heifers just ran up. <laughs> they're on the other side of the creek. I don't know how they're going to get across, but hopefully they'll stay there and wait until the water goes down. So. <laughs> this tractor weighs, uh, I think it's 13,800 pounds. Um, it is like one of the best pulling tractors I've ever driven. You know, smaller tractors. Once I lose that 6,000 pounds, <coughs> I shouldn't have too much trouble uh, getting out of here. Ah, oh, damn it, I shouldn't have said that. Golly, what did I say that for? I guess we'll see what happens now. <coughs> so that was putting out feed for heifers. Uh, we're just driving back to the dairy right now. Um, I just wanted to explain how we feed and graze at the same time or together or whatever. Um, so we have a a package, a, you know, a TMR package or a mix that we go by, you know, so many pounds of corn, so many pounds of our uh, mix and so many pounds of soybean meal and the mineral and so many pounds of baleage. <coughs> And then so, uh, you know, depending on weather, if it's extreme cold or extreme heat, or, um, you know, if we're going through a little bit of a dr drought or whatever may be the case, I, uh, I adjust the percentage of that feed for the heifers. So, uh, if the heifers got, <laughs> if the heifers have decent grass and I you know I drive out in the field and, and where they are and they're standing at the feed troughs that tells me that it's kind of the opposite of what you would think but that tells me that they're not hungry because they're just standing there waiting around the feed troughs uh, if they were actually a little bit hungry they would be out grazing grass so if I pull up to the gate you know they should be grazing and come running to the feed troughs or, or start going to the feed troughs knowing feed's coming. So if they're just standing there at the feed troughs, that tells me they're not hungry. Um, and then, you know, if there's, if I can, if I, if, you know, whether I <coughs> take the ranger or a four wheeler or when I put out feed and I go out there and I realize, uh, you know, grass is fairly short. Um, and I can tell that they're moving across a field very quickly. Yeah, that tells me that grass is running out. So I need to up the percentage in feed. And then, uh, you know, then obviously if there's a lot of grass blowing in the wind, I need to take feed away from them to make them more hungry to graze grass. The grass is the cheapest feed we have that we can grow, you know, we, that we're growing our own. You know, um, uh, it, it's it's really nothing compared to buying uh, buying commodities. And, you know, all the forage is everything that we've built, surplus fields that we've built, or hay fields that we've uh, grown hay on. Uh, that's the second cheapest thing that we can do. <coughs> uh, and you're looking at a, a bale of hay or a ton of hay. <coughs> cost us about uh, fifty dollars a ton and you know that's the our labor or the fertilized uh, um, you know lime um, and then the, just the cost of making the bill and then uh, you know right now a load of a load of ground corn is like hundred eighty three dollars a ton uh, soybean meal is three hundred sixty five dollars a ton 
Um, the three-way mix is uh, all together. It's about two hundred dollars a ton. So the the best uh, the the better we can manage the grass and make a higher quality grass saves us money. So we try to put a lot of effort into trying to manage you know managing the weeds. Uh, keeping uh, the grass at the right length, you know, where it's not getting rank. Um, <coughs> so it's, from what I was saying a while ago before I had to close the gate uh, was, you know, we put a lot of effort into managing the grass and, and trying to keep it the best quality that we can have to save us money. And, uh, um, At the end of the day, what we want is a a profitable heifer. Uh, no, heifers aren't profitable. At the end of the day, what we want is to to raise a heifer to her genetic potential at the lowest cost that we can. Um, we're not going to cheap out on the heifers. If you do, if you cheap out on your heifers, you might as well just go find something else to do. Um, we're trying to grow we're trying to grow a heifer as quickly as possible with less feed cost um, and then also you know pushing them a little bit to graze also teaches them that when they come into milk they know how to graze and they uh, they'll, they'll thrive in that kind of environment so that's what we do. Uh, I mean, we already have those three or four month old heifers. They're already on grass. They're grazing um, and they're getting their grain. When they're about six months old, they'll they'll get switched over to TMR, and uh, and then they'll be uh, just going along like what these other ones are. Uh, and that's how that works out for the best for us. Is a lower feed cost and animals that can graze grass. <laughs>